The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by the Flex Belt. Summer is approaching fast. If you want to uh, strengthen and tone your abs, the Flex Belt, which is FDA cleared, might just be for you. Follow the link in the description below to get your very own. The MMA Discussion Podcast is now available to listen to on iTunes and the radio podcast app Stitcher, which is available free for all smartphone devices. Along with my co-host Chris, we are here with the 30th episode of the MMA Discussion Podcast. And uh, with us a very special guest, former Tachi Palace Fights Bantamweight and Flyweight Champion, former Bellator veteran and UFC veteran, Ulysses Useless Gomez, back for your second appearance on our podcast. How you doing, man? Good man, just hang out. <laughs> Glad to have you on. Uh, it's been about a year now since we've last had you on, uh, and it's good to catch up with you, uh, my host Chris. Um, Chris, are you there? I haven't heard anything from yeah. you. What's up yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you, uh, Ulysses, we wanted to kind of catch up with you. First question has got to ask is, uh, how's life? How's you been? It's cool, man. If you hear someone whispering, it's my son. He's in the background. Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, well, what have you been up to? Uh, your last fight was a few months ago. Uh, what have you been doing uh, in the meantime since that last fight with uh, at RFA, I believe, 18? Um, just pretty much just hanging out, man. Just trying to, like, uh, like when I fight, I, I kinda, I'm pretty selfish as far as how much time I put in the gym and trying to get as much uh, sleep and all this other stuff, you know. So I'm trying to, like, enjoy family time a little bit. You know, hang out with my son as much as I can, and, mm -hmm. you know. That. Well, I wanted to. Uh, uh, one of the first questions, obviously, is that uh, it's been since uh, September. Do you plan on never come um, fighting anytime soon this year, or what are the, your ideas or plans for that? Um, yeah, I think I got a couple more fights left. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find that Brian Hall guy. But uh, I don't know if he didn't want to fight me or uh, what happened, but apparently I'm not fighting him, so I'm just kind of hanging out, you know. Gotcha. Well, uh, do, are you still signed with the RFA, and uh, if so, is that the promotion you'd be fighting for the next couple of fights moving forward? Uh, I'm still signed with them. Um, as far as I know, I, I can also fight <laughs> as long as I give them advance notice and just, you know, the kind of stuff, you know. Yes, uh, um, they are my main employer, I guess you could say. All right, man. I'll, I gotta ask. I noticed like uh, you have a presence on social media around MMA in general, and I just want to know like how long have you been a fan for? Were you a fan before you got into fighting, or did you start fighting and just become a fan through that? Because I see you everywhere, man. Hey. Uh, I feel like I used to be a fan. I still have, you know. I remember watching the first, uh, first. Like, uh, well, until like I probably like uh, maybe like middle school, high school. That's how I found out that about uh, MMA, the UFC was real. So then once I found out that, that was real, then we'll forget following pro wrestling and we follow this stuff that's real, you know. Well, that's how I kind of started getting into training all that stuff. Well, Ulysses, um, you've uh, been more of a pro uh prominent jiu-jitsu fighter most of your career as well as you have a very um uh, uh veteranized grappling career do you do you plan on getting into grappling anytime soon as well um i know you had one last summer uh since then i haven't seen you yeah i wanted i want to man um it's just so hard man like cause every time i want to do something like as far as like the pan am or the mundials or something i would get hit up with the flag and i'm like well i can you know do this tournament you know maybe win it maybe not win it Definitely make no money, or I can, you know, take this fight, the money, and the fight don't make more money, you know, so it's kind of hard sometimes, you know? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, you still are very, uh, as Chris said, very interactive with the fans. Um, like, uh, do you still enjoy watching MMA? Uh, do you still enjoy, um, especially in the UFC, watching the, the flyweight division? And if so, what is your thought actually on the UFC's flyweight division? How, how do you perceive it thus far? Um, I don't really watch that many fights anymore. Just because uh, there's a lot of them. There's watched, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah there's a lot, you know. That's I watch some of the people that I like, you know. Yeah. But as far as like the who who they have in the flyweight division, 
I mean, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to, to bet against Demetrius because he hasn't lost, you know, that way. Um, I mean, the closest person that probably beat him was Joseph Benavides. I mean, you can say Ian McCall. I mean, I think Ian McCall should have beat him, but he kind of like he showed up a little bit too much, and that kind of like came back and bit him in the butt. You know, he really had only has himself to blame for that performance, you know, or for that for that loss or draw. Since it was a draw, I guess. Yeah, that was a very odd instance in that it was supposed to go to a fourth and fifth, or a fourth yeah, at I least, mean, you know, and he, it just didn't. Did. I know Ian, he's a cool guy, you know, and uh, we have the same manager. Uh, he could, you know, say, you know, like, there should have been a fourth round, there should have been this, there should have been that. Mm-hmm. He could say whatever he wants, but the same exact time, like, he was in the best, one of the most dominant positions in a fight game to finish the fight, and he chose to kind of, like, trouble a little bit, you know? And maybe, so whether it was the fourth round or not, like, he had his chance to finish, and it's kind of, like, his own fault, you know? That's yeah. kind of, you know, and he'll probably say the same exact thing, you know, because I'm sure if he can go back and do that again, he would finish, he would finish Demetrius as opposed to kind of show up, but whatever, man, that happens. Yeah, I hear you. Good point. Um, right. One of the things cool. also, oh, go ahead, Chris. All right, um, so, yeah, I was looking back at your record, and I saw back in 2010 you had one fight for Bellator, and you won, but you wound up never going back and fighting for them after that. Why did you only take the one fight there? Uh, I was actually in the tournament, the Bantamweight tournament, and um, I beat Travis Redinger. And then my second fight, I was supposed to fight Zach Mikowski. I got staffed, so I couldn't. I couldn't. I had to pull out of the tournament. And then when I pulled out of the tournament, um, this is when B- Bjorn still ran Bellator. He uh, he got a little upset because I I was uh, um, out. Huh? Because you had to pull out. No, no, because uh, at the time I was still, okay, so I was I had won the title belt at 125, and they offered me to fight at 135 for Bellator, so yeah, I'll go up. So I beat Travis to get, you know, in the tournament, and I had to pull out of the tournament. He understood, like, me pulling out because, you know, I had staff or whatever. Um, they replaced me with, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but he ended up losing to Zach, and Zach ended up winning the whole thing. But uh, and then, like, a couple months later, Tati Palos asked me if I could do commentary on one of the shows because I had, uh, you know, I held, I held the bell, and... He had nobody else to commentary, so I did it, and apparently he got mad because I didn't ask, I didn't ask for his per- permission to do commentary. Um, so we kind of got into it about that and then some other stuff, you know. So then I got released after that. Or I don't know if I got released or if I asked for my, if I asked for my papers. It was one of the – I forget which one of the two, but it's kind of much how that went down. Okay, that makes sense. And I was going to ask as a follow-up to that. Because I know you fought basically everywhere. You fought for Tai Chi Palace, you were fighting for the RFA, you fought for the UFC, and obviously Bellator, which didn't go the best for you. But um, I just wanted to know which organization did you have the best experience with? Obviously, it's not Bellator, but of the others. Um, I mean, I never lost in Bellator because I only had one fight. <laughs> so, um, I guess, I, I guess, I mean, every fight I had in the UFC, I lost. That kind of sucks. Uh, Tachi, you know, I was like, I won more than I lost. I had two belts there, so I was cool. Um, I, I mean, I don't have anything bad to say about Bellator. It was just kind of weird, you know, when, when uh, Bjorn kind of ran the company. It was just, he was like, I don't know. I didn't know I was supposed to ask for his permission to uh, to do commentary on on a show that I had the belt for. Um, so that was kind of weird to me, but whatever. Uh, but as far as, like, who, I mean, the UFC paid nice. I think I made more money in Tachi Pass than I did in the UFC because I probably fought for them longer. Can you repeat that uh, last sentence, Ulysses? Because I was actually kind of losing you there. Oh, um, I made more money probably fighting Itachi because when I fought there, I was a champion and I obviously got my win bonus because I won most of my fights. Mm-hmm. Uh, the UFC, you know, you get a lot of publicity, so that's nice. And Bellator, I won the defeat in some more fights, so. Um, they all have like the pros and cons. As far as the RFA, you know, I mean, for I really can't complain. You know, the only thing that sucks is that I haven't been as active, but that's more so just because of timing issues. But I mean, you know, like, I I could I pull good things and bad things from each show, you know. Yeah. Um. From uh from your time in the UFC, you actually fought for London, which was the only time I believe you've ever fought outside of the US. What was your experience like fighting uh out there at the time? Oh, it sucked. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. London, I mean, the, the city is cool, you know. The people uh, were uh, <laughs> rude. I don't know if that's what they say. The people it, were it, rude? It's just different, you know, because, like, uh, I'm real laid back. I kind of, like, take my time. Yeah. I get to wherever I got to go early, but, like, I don't rush to get there because I'm always, like, leave ahead of time. 
and we're, we're, wherever we're walking in London, people were cutting us off. Like, that's like, I guess probably, I've never been to New York, but I can kind of probably kind of see London being like New York, where like everybody has somewhere to go, you know, and uh, they don't have time to talk and that kind of thing. Um, I wasn't a fan of the judges in the UFC in London, so that kind of sucked as well. Uh, the food wasn't very good, man, but the city's pretty nice. It was beautiful. Um, they're, they're pretty big soccer fans or football fans, as they call us, so that's always that's always a plus in my book, too. Yeah, you have a, a brother, Hercules Gomez, yes? Uh, that, uh, yeah. is a soccer player. Um, yeah. Was there ever a time where, uh, like, are you really good at soccer, and was there ever a time where you thought that that could be an avenue of a career no, for you? I or sucked, no, bro. Huh? I sucked. Oh, you suck? <laughs> I was like this, man. It's like, I played soccer. My brother started playing soccer when he was, like, two or three. And, like, when we would go, uh, when we would go play soccer, I would go to hang out with my friend. He would go, like, to, like, you know, like, go to play, you know? Um, I stuck so bad, man, that, like, whatever. my brother was so good, and I stuck so bad that if, if a, a team wanted them to play, or him to play on their team, they had to take me, too. That was, like, the, the <laughs> two for one, you know? Two for one deal? Yeah, man. Like, that's how bad I sucked, you know? And even, like, now, my dad, my dad will be like, oh, no, you're real good at soccer, but... I mean, good compared to who, compared to what, you know? Like, my brother played in the World Cup, so I can't be that good, you know? And I'm real competitive, so. Especially now, I mean, my brother's, he turns 33 on Saturday, and I turn 32 on Monday, so we're 13 months. We're, 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 we're what we call Mexican twins. We're 13 months apart, you know? Yeah. And uh, so we're, yeah, we're very competitive, you know? <laughs> Moving forward, uh, like, um, if you were to compete again, where would it be, at bantamweight or flyweight? Um. I figured uh, the cut man, must uh, suck. Uh, uh, um, I, I mean, the UFC, I, at one point in time, I was probably ranked, like, what, top? You top were, at one point, top five at flyweight yeah, before it was uh, put sure into top, the UFC. Yeah, maybe top five, depending on who you asked, at what, 25? Mm-hmm. Uh, sure Dog had you at number five right right as the flyweight division uh, was yeah, incorporated right. into the uh, UFC. Back I guess in the day. was our friend, man, so he just did it. Nice. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I definitely don't like cutting weight, you know. But I definitely don't like finding bigger guys, so I don't know. <laughs> that fight at RFA, that was at that was at a uh, flyweight, right? It was at thirty five. Oh, it was uh, at thirty five. Okay. Even, even the weight class didn't matter because honestly, um, Abel should have fought. He should be fighting at one twenty five anyway, so the weight wasn't even an issue. Yeah. So um, before you went into the UFC, you were nine and two, and um. Um, Chris, really Chris, repeat that. Uh, repeat that. You skipped out on the audio. Yeah, I'm no, no, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I was saying um, you began your career, at, you were 9-2, and two, and then once you went to the UFC, you obviously, things didn't go your way, and you dropped your last three, and you've only competed once a year since 2012, and I know you said you planned on fighting again. Do you think you'll ever make your way back to the UFC, and do you want to fight more often coming up? Ah, uh, man, you know what, honestly, bro, that's a good question, man. I, I, I ask myself that, you know, at least every other week, sometimes once a week, you know, like, do I have, uh, do I have another run in me, you know, it's kind of hard, you know, it took me, you know, a couple years to get there, it took me like, you know, I mean, I started training August 1st, 2001, and I made it to the UFC, I think my first fight in the UFC was August 5th, 2012, so it took me 11 years to get there, and I moved out in six months, <laughs> you know what I mean, so I was kind of like, man. I don't know. I still debate about that every, you know, every so often. If, if uh, I have another run left in me, you know, I see the the amount of work in front of me, and I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to go through that again. But at the same time, it's like I know like a lot of people that are at the UFC, you know, right now, I'm like, I just smashed most of those guys. But it's uh, it's not what you know. It's what you can prove, you know. Yeah. Definitely. You still do you still train at the uh, Cobra Kai gym? Yeah. Uh, right now, like since I have nothing lined up, I kind of like you know. I'll, Kind of stop in there maybe two, three times a week, depending on uh on what my son wants to do. Like I said, um, <laughs> I take a lot of time away from my family when I'm training for fights. So if I don't have to, I'd rather I wake up and he's just like, he just wants to stay home and watch cartoons all day, then we'll just stay home and watch cartoons all day, you know? <laughs> what is it you do now? Do you train there, uh, or do you train there like as a coach or something? Like, what, what, what's your what's your means of uh, keeping afloat b- uh, before you get another fight going? Uh, I just train to just have fun, man. You know, just uh, mess around with the guys, you know, uh, get better jujitsu. you know, hang out with my friends. And uh, it's weird because, like, um, like uh, all my family is, like, in California, so, like, my cousins and all that. Mm-hmm. 
So I consider like everybody from the gym, like my, you know, like my family, family, you know, that's not like my sister and all that, you know. So to me, that's like me, you know, like that, that for me, you know. Yeah. Hey. Moving um from that, like, uh, is there anybody uh, that trains at Cobra Kai that you see making it someday, like going somewhere big? That's getting that's uh putting in some work that could possibly make it to the UFC or Bellator or World Series of Fighting. Man, you know what, man? That's such a loaded question because for a while, like, you know, everybody was talking about I would be the next big thing, and I kind of filled it out. And there's guys who you think would never make it, and they're kind of like, you know, doing their thing, you know, where they're at. So, you know, it's uh, it all depends on that person's mindset, you know. I can say this person could be, the, you know, the, great, the, the best thing in the world, and, you know, they could be on one, too. Or I can say this person's never going to do anything, and they could, you know, be yeah. a champion. It's hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you see it? Do you see anyone out there with the just the talent and the skill that, like, they could that you feel like they can make it? Obviously, you just had, like you just said. Sometimes you don't you don't really know, but do you see anyone who has that same skill level? Um, as far as Cobra Kai, yeah, there's a couple of guys who just got to be in Luhan. He's uh, yeah, he a whole bunch of belt out and uh, that, that tough enough. Now nah, I think he's got some of the fighter fighting. So I think he's gonna do one thirty fives. Got an exchange here. We got a couple couple fights at the top. He's he's coming up. Um, but it's always it's hard, man. You know, I mean, um, when uh, it's 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 different fighting in front of a couple hundred people as opposed to a couple thousand people. You know. Yeah. yeah the pressure's on. What what's the name? What's his name again? I don't know if I caught that. There's one um Ian Luhan. The other one's Shane Shapiro. Shane Shapiro. Cool. Well, that's cool, man. Um, I I. I wanted to. I had I had to put that your appearance on, on the show was going to be for tomorrow because this is like a recorded thing. So, um, what we have is that uh, I got a few uh, Twitter questions as well as a couple on Facebook from uh, some of your fans. I wanted me to ask you uh, if that's okay. Yeah. Oh man, maybe we go to Facebook one first. Keep on Twitter rude. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Facebook first, then we'll go. Nah, go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, Facebook verse is probably better. You're not wrong. <laughs> it's only 140 characters. You can only blame them so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one's from, uh, I think, I believe, Jorge um, Deleas. He asked, um, what was one of your favorite fights that you ever competed in, and what about it uh, other than the fight ahead of it did you love so much? I guess he means, like, going into the fight, what excited you about it, and, yeah. Oh, uh, man. Every fight that I've had, like, was, like, interesting, you know? Like, my first fight, it was cool because my first fight that I won. My second fight was cool because, like, I broke the dude's arm, so that was cool. <laughs> I, actually, I actually broke his arm twice. Oh, how dare you? Um, <laughs> in, my, in, my, in my defense, he tried to do the same thing to me. Yeah, my third fair fight enough. Was, well, that was interesting because he was, like, ranked, like, top four or five in the world at that time. and So that was, like, just a very, like, interesting uh, fight for me because of who he was at the time and where I was at, you know? Definitely. I probably should have never fought him, but you know, I, I mean, not that time at least. And then, uh, then I lost that fight. So my first fight after loss was always interesting. Cause you got to see, you know, what you're made of. So every fight was interesting, uh, um, as far as like what they brought to the table. Probably my favorite fight that I've, I've probably had. Uh, uh, um, I I think like you know, when I fought uh, this guy named Tarzan Sandoval. Or when I fought Luis Gonzalez. Probably Luis Gonzalez because he was a huge guy. He was a black belt. And he was like a real good black belt. And all the other guys that I fought at the time, I was better on the ground than, than them. And that guy had actually beat my coach in the grappling tournament. So I was just like, all oh, these guys that run through you. So I just I beat him up on the feet. So that was a good fight. Plus, it was for the belt. So that's always nice. Oh, that was uh, where you won the flyweight belt, correct? Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 that was like the most fun I ever had coming out to a fight because. Uh, before the fight, like, I came out, he came out first, because for some reason, there was an argument, it was going to come out first or second, I didn't really care, you know, but I, he was such a big deal to him, so I was like, all right, I was like, well, because he was making a big deal that he wanted to come out second, so I was like, well, I want to come out second, and we ended up having, I forgot, I think what it was, like, he said that I wasn't going to make way for the fight, so I told him, if I make way for the fight, I go, not only uh, is it, you know, um, I go, so I something like, if, if I don't make way, you get to pick whatever song I come out to, and if I make way, uh, I come out second. It was something stupid like that, and I obviously I made weight. Yeah. And um, he came out first because he was from he was from that area. And like, no, no, this isn't Dolph Ziggler, dude. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, he's a professor. Yeah, no worries. And um, he 
you came up first, the whole crowd was going crazy. Then I remember when I came out, the whole screen went black, and then my name goes on the mar- on the marquee, and everybody just started booing, you know, because obviously he's from the area. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, my song came on, and my song was a, uh, hang on, dude, was a uh, baby from Justin Bieber. Yeah. And the girls started like yelling, so I was like, oh man, I was like, uh, I didn't expect that at all, you know, because they obviously loved that song at the time, you know, I mean, like 2010 or 11. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember you infamously came out to that for your fight with John Moraga, I believe it was, right? Yeah, yeah, when I fight John. Yeah, that was hilarious. I remember yeah. I remember watching that with my girlfriend, and she's like, his nickname is useless, and he's coming out to baby. I don't know why he's trying to like make me not root for him right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like whatever. You know, I've come out, I've come out to that. I've come out to, I come out to Fabulous a lot. I've come out, you ever played the video game uh, Gears of War? Yeah, yeah. You know that song Mad World by Gary Jules? Yeah, no way. You came out to that? Which one? Uh, I think my I think my first fight. No, my second fight. My third fight. A whole bunch of times. Yeah, wow. That's yeah. <laughs> I got to go back and see if I can watch the walkthroughs. That's pretty funny. That's cool. Another question. I, this is on me. I actually am curious to ask you this. Uh, that first fight where you won the flyweight belt, you had only gone to a decision one time, and it was a three-round fight. And then this that fight where you won the flyweight belt, you went yeah. all five rounds. Um, was that difficult at all? Was that something you had to overcome in those later rounds? Uh, how was it fighting a five round fight for the first time when you won the belt? Um, well, to be honest, man, it's it, it, it's easy when you when you're controlling the pace of the fight. You know, I kept the fight on the beat and it was easy for me because I did take where I went. Mm-hmm. Um, I got dude, I'm talking about doing something. When, um, the fourth the fourth round, I took the fourth round off, you know, and that's the only round I won. Then I came stronger than this one, so it all depends on a, uh, on a, uh, hang on a second. No worries, brother, no worries. <laughs> I kind of want to, I, I'm really, I, I really need to watch that fight now, or that second fight, the one with Hector Alexander, where he comes out to that song, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that was a while back. That was a while back, what, 22 out, uh, 2008, yeah. Alright, hello guys. Yeah, what's up? Yep, alright. Um, but yeah, it all depends on, uh. I was dictating the face of the fight, so that, that was a lot better for me, you know? Mm-hmm. You were, um, what was it? The fight with uh, Daryl Montague, that was actually the one that I, 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 uh, I watched, where I first yeah, saw you fight. I remember I first, that was the first time I ever saw you fight. That was a what? That was my worst performance, man. Really? Yeah, he beat me up pretty good. <laughs> um, I remember watching that fight, and um, what was it? It seemed like... Uh, you had a uh, trouble dealing with him on on uh, uh, on the uh, in the striking. Yeah, I had a lot of things going on to fight that you know. It's like whatever you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won. I'm not making excuses. We'll go to the next Facebook question here, um, and then the reason I asked that was uh, what is it? He said, um, "This is from uh, Alexa. I guess he's presenting Alexa Brazo, uh, who asked you your um." Um, what is your jiu-jitsu status, and um, when is the next time you'll compete in jiu-jitsu? I believe we asked you that, so just, I guess, answer the first part of that question. Oh, uh, I'm a brown belt jiu-jitsu right now. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing the Vegas Open or the uh, that Hickson tournament, but I'm not sure yet. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. I hope he's not talking to me. If so, I'm really sorry. Nah, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, last Facebook question. Um, would you ever be open to competing for Meta Morris? And if so, who yeah, would you want to compete? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to to wrestle them. I wanted to do Meta Morris a while ago, but they never got back to me. Oh, uh, gotcha. If so, who would you want to compete against? Man, um, man, one of my, he's one of my friends. But like every time we train together, we have a good match. The Grand Olympic is the same. I've never beat him. Tra- we've wrestled like maybe three or four times a tournament, and I've never beat him. And we've trained probably like uh, maybe 20, 30 times since then, and I still haven't beat him in training. Daddy! Hang on, dude. But every time uh, I wrestle him, it's fun. It's uh, with Jeff Glover. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. We'll go on to the Twitter questions. Uh, hopefully they're cool. And Donkey Kong is serious. <sighs> What's up? And Donkey Kong is serious. <laughs> this one is from at it's all right <laughs> 27 which is, um he asks i know you were a huge uh wrestling fan caught your shirt at wrestle uh caught your shirt for wrestlemania who is your favorite pro wrestler oh i wore my macho man shirt 
Yeah, the match. I saw that. It was like a pink shirt. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, my, former, my favorite pro wrestler now is Ben. I think Ben would probably be like uh, the Ultimate Warrior. But like the more the more I find out about him, like how crazy he was, probably not so much now. Like my favorite pro wrestler now, kind of like Randy Orton. I think it's fun when I when I'm at the gym and I just walk into someone and just RKO them. <laughs> I don't know what I, what's going on, you know. <laughs> Who, uh, my question here, like, who's your? I, I follow it too, so I would know who you're talking about. Um, who's your least favorite? See that one time? Like, who's your least favorite? Like, if like if you could see him get R killed right now, who would you want that to be? You know what, man? Uh, uh, what is he? He's a huge Bray Wyatt fan, and I don't really like Bray Wyatt much. You don't like Bray Wyatt? <laughs> nah, not at all. So we kind of go into back and forth about that. I kind of have the same deal going because I just like there's just something about his physique that really throws me off. Yeah, he just looks. He just looks like what? Are you talking about Bray Wyatt or someone else though? Nah, Bray Wyatt. He looks yeah, like but you yeah, said something. Here. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's like I feel like if he's a really prominent wrestler, he could get his physique going better. You know, what did you think of that match uh, with him at the Undertaker at WrestleMania this past Sunday? Um, I knew he was the Undertaker was gonna win. Come on. I had a feeling. I told my I told my friend I was like I think the Undertaker's gonna win. And then he's gonna wrestle uh, Brock at WrestleMania next year, and then he's gonna retire. He's gonna beat Brock at retiring. You know, eventually he's gonna toss. That see, sounds. Where you guys lose me? I haven't watched wrestling. In oh, see, it sucks days. to be you. You missing <laughs> out, son. <laughs> uh, we'll go to the next question. Uh, this is by uh, it's, uh by uh, Alexis um, T Rec or Trek. I don't know if I said that right. If so, I'm sorry. Um, what was the oh. That's okay. Hold on. I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. What's been your favorite location to ever fight in, and what's been your worst? I think you told us London was your worst, so go ahead and tell us your favorite spot. Um, I think mean, actually London was my worst. The worst was probably like Newcastle. I, I like uh, I had that whole episode where mm -hmm. I had collapsed putting weight, so that was that definitely sucked. Oh, that's right. I'm kind of losing you on audio, Ulysses. Could you get a little closer to your mic? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, fought in Turkey was my favorite. Turkey? Yeah. You fought in Turkey? Yeah, I went up there for like a pet creation tournament. And uh, it was like three or three fights in like a day or two days or something. That was fun. Oh, wow. When was this? Was this like in your amateur career? Yeah, it's 2007. It's like one day. Uh, uh, like in 2000. Yeah. Oh man, I'm kind of losing you right now. Can you give me a sec here? It was, cool, just like, it was supposed to be like uh, MMA gloves and shin guards, and then we'll get there. They're like, okay, no shin guards. You know, and you can't hit the face. And they're like, okay, we should hit the face because with these gloves, and they gave us like knuckle guards and football. So it's pretty much like a face, just keep face. Like, uh, yeah, okay, cool. That's cool. What was your amateur record, if, if, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I think it was like. Well, they were all. They, I never just did tough enough and none of that stuff. I would do the um, migration. It's like I'm sure, but maybe you couldn't. You couldn't hit to the body. I mean, you couldn't hit to the face. I'm sorry. Oh. And, yeah. The only fight that I, like, I beat him, I won against everybody except for one guy. I had to draw because of some like weird rules. But then I fought him again, like a couple months later in Turkey, and I beat him. So like, whatever. Gotcha. What What is it about the area that you love so much? So what is it about the area that you love so much? But Turkey was fun, man. Nice. It was fun. This will be the last. Uh, we got one last Twitter question here. Pretty good one. Uh, for if you ever fought at 135 and competed in the UFC, who would you want to fight? Man, uh, who do I not like at 135? <laughs> oh man. Question. I mean, I would say Henry Cujo from 25 now, you know. Henry Cejudo? Yeah, whatever his name is. Oh, you don't like that dude? No, I mean, I don't know him, you know. But, uh, if you're baby, you know, be a lot, a lot of hype around that fight because of who he is, so you'd be a lot of red tape. How do you think you do with a wrestler like that? I don't know, man. I, I usually have a tough time with people, someone like, people I can't take down. Uh -huh. um, well, that's the thing is that he would probably try and take you down. <laughs> Well, you, you would assume he, he, he won it, but you never know, you know? Yeah, true. 
That would be an interesting fight. I know, man. Questions. I don't follow you to that. You know, like I said, Well, the guy you were supposed to fight at Bellator, I believe it was 30 or 29, that uh, where Zach Makovsky and you were supposed to fight. Um, Zach Makovsky fights John Dawson. What could put him in line for a uh, title shot against Demetrius Johnson should he win? How do you think that fight goes? Uh, um, I think I still think Demetrius. Well, no, I mean between uh, John Dodson and Zach Mikovsky. Oh, between them two? Um, Dodson, man. He's just he's, he's super. Well, I mean, I know you know Joby Sanchez. Do I know who? He fights the UFC. He lost to Wilson Hayes and beat some other guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me and him are buddies, you know, and uh, he's always telling me stories about, about training. He said that Dodson was a nightmare, you know, and I think just Dodson, he's super athletic. Um,. Probably not the best ground for man, but he's just a, so a good. Now he's hard to take down. He's actually he's a good second tough time. Definitely. Well, that's all the questions we have for fans. Um, Chris, did you have anything else you want to ask him? Uh, no, I think I'm all set. I had a really fun time talking to you, dude. Yeah, you've easy. He, yeah, you, you're easily one of the funnier guests we've ever had. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of questions. Yeah, we. Okay. Um, this is anything else you want to uh, shout out uh, your uh, sponsors, anybody, your brother, anybody? Um, you know what? So I was thinking about some of the questions you asked earlier. Uh, I would say Dolph Ziggler is probably my favorite wrestler right now. Can you and say that again? Uh, and a closer to the mic, I'm kind of losing you again. Oh, sorry. I'd say probably Dolph Ziggler is probably my favorite wrestler right now. Oh uh, yeah, that's not a bad choice. And if there was someone that wanted to fight again, that's in the UFC. That's I mean, it would be uh, Neil Sirix. Me and him kind of had a little bit of episode in England. Oh, and really? Then, uh, yeah, and then, you know, he got time with the UFC and some stuff was said, and, you know, I'm pretty sure he wants to punch me in the face, and I definitely want to punch him in the face. <laughs> oh, that kind of thing. Um, I right, think then. about it, you know? Yeah. All right, then. Well, for me, I, I personally would love to see you fight again. I'm, I'm a big fan, you know that, and uh, um, I've always enjoyed watching you fight. Um, and uh, whether it's grappling or in, in MMA, I hope to see you back in there again. I hope you get another run in you. Um, I know that training for as long as you have doesn't make you relatively fight young, but uh, I I would pr love to see you in there again, and uh, you know, hopefully we can have you back on here again. You're a fun guest, man. Um, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, as far as like uh, my body's not beat up, you know, it's just more so like, do I want to like kind of go through the the hassles of another training camp and all the other stuff? Certainly, you know? and that's a that's a real honest way of looking at it. You really gotta really gotta commit, especially. Yeah. A lot of times people don't realize how much work exactly goes into all that. And when you put it that way, I think it helps them understand a little bit more. Especially. Well, I mean, you know, like, if, I mean, obviously, you know, I lost three in a row. Uh, technically, I feel like I lost one, then I, I got shooting on a decision, then I lost another one. But with whatever, you know. Yeah, um, the Phil Harris one. Horrible yeah. call, I thought. I personally. Know, but you're not going to take someone back, you know, after you win, you know. You, you probably got to get another three or four, you know, so. At least a year and a half. Yeah, definitely. But you never know. It depends on how good you look in there, you know? Yeah, that's true. Well, Ulysses, we've, we've uh, had such a great time having you on. Again, you were one of the more entertaining uh, guests we've ever had. I love talking to you, man. And I uh, would love to have you back on here again sometime soon, yeah? Thanks for coming on, man. Anytime. Next time I have my, uh, my, my uh, wife watch my son. He's over here. <laughs> no worries, man. No worries, he brings man. some entertainment value in, into it as well. <laughs> Yeah, he's awesome. Does he still have the crazy long hair? Yeah, my, my girl doesn't want to cut it. Like, I'm so jealous, man. Hair. I want it. I want some long hair <laughs> like that. Dude, I only want his hair because I want to dress up and to him at heart, you know, for Halloween. But. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to see that, man. Ulysses, we I love having you tight, on. You know? Go ahead, say that again. I said even have a pink tights. <laughs> nice. Well, Ulysses, uh, we've had a great time having you on. Um... Yes, please join us again. Uh, you can hit uh, Ulysses Gomez at Useless Gomez on Twitter and uh, your Facebook handle, of course, Useless or uh, Ulysses Gomez. Um, but please, the next time you're uh, you, you got either a fight set or a jiu jitsu tournament set, um, or if, you know if you get if you happen to get a Meta Morris matchup, which I think would be perfect suited for you to uh, get back in there, um, please let us know, and we'd love to have you back on. That woman, I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Gomez. Uh, I'll talk Thank to you, you soon. And
and that was Ulysses Useless Gomez. That was a very fun interview. He is an awesome guest. Can't wait to have him back on here again. And now joining us right now, uh, MMAD admin Jonas. Jonas, are you there? I am back. Oh, he's back. Hello, people. What's up, bro? Good to have you back on. We got some matchups we got to talk about. It's been a, uh, quite a few announced, and I and yes, I'd been wait, I'd been waiting for this because 189 has only had those two title fights, and now it's gotten a couple uh, added to it. Brandon Thatz versus John Howard, and Gunnar Nelson versus John Hathaway being the two. Those are two very very exciting matchups. Let's talk about the more exciting one for me first. Brandon Thatz versus John Howard. That is a uh, that's a good fight. He's taking on a powerhouse. Uh, is Thatch and it will be interesting to see how he bounces back from that loss to uh, Henderson. Um, I would think that Thatch could uh, utilize that reach really well against Howard. He somewhat did against uh, Benson in their in their first fight and uh, or in their fight this past February. Uh, I, I got a uh, right off the top of my head. I, I feel Thatch wins this, uh, but John Howard is always dangerous. You never know if that dude clocks you one good shot, it's over. Um, Jonas, I know you're a fan of Thatch. What do you think of that fight? Yeah, I, I love that fight. Uh, it's a good, you know, fight for Thatch to regain his bearings in the division uh, for his career. Uh, but like you said, John Howard is no joke. He's very powerful. Uh, just He has that knockout power, and if he manages to pull that off, uh, Thatch will be on a streak. I don't think he's had a losing streak. I think he's only got one loss uh, on his record. So Yeah, cool. that Henderson Before, uh, fight is his only loss. No, he lost before, didn't he? Batch? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I might I might be confusing him with yeah, I'm I'm confusing him with somebody right now. My bad. He had a decision loss. That's right, yeah. yeah. He lost once before. So he hasn't had a losing streak yet, so uh, I think I think Batch will be able to pull this off. And hopefully that sets up Batch and Steven Thompson at some point. That's the fight I'm really looking for when it comes to Batch. Mm-hmm. From being honest and real. Sorry. But uh, yeah, John Howard, he's also got a lot to show, so we'll see how that all works out. I think that's a very good matchup. Can't yeah. even really call a win on that one right now, but Pac-Man. it will definitely be one, one to watch. Yeah, I got to agree with both you guys. I think that's just going to take it. I mean, Howard, yeah, he does have knockout power. He's pretty well-rounded. If he needs to get to the fight to the mat, he can. But um, I think that's just going to be working his defensive wrestling a lot. If he doesn't get taken down and kept there, I think he'll wind up picking uh, Howard apart, using his reach, and finding a finish in this fight, too. Yeah, person. when's the last time Howard fought? Uh, Did he fight after Uriah? The, after what? Oh, Uriah Hall? Yeah, oh. I believe he did. I believe he fought a, a bunch of times after that. I think he lost. That. He fought like four times yeah. since that fight. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at it. Yeah, he beat C.R. Bahadur Zada after that, and then he's actually on a nine fight. He's on a nine fight or a nine fight, a three fight losing streak. Oh, he was on a nine. <laughs> That's Bob Sapp territory. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's lost to Ryan Lafleur, Brian Ebersol, and recently got knocked out by Lorenz Larkin Lorenz at the uh, recently, yeah at the beginning Larkin, of the year, yeah. first card of the year. That's yeah, right. Yeah, he got beat up in that fight. Oof. Yeah, he got starched. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a little weird that you can give Thatch a guy on a three-fight losing streak. Certainly, I mean he's only lost one fight, and it was actually uh, you know a former champion. But uh, so I, f- I feel like maybe this is a step down for Thatch, even for Thatch being on a being coming off a loss. But you know Howard, uh, if he can get this win, um, will certainly uh, you know get some bearing back into the division uh, himself. Another fight that was announced, Gunnar Nelson versus John Hathaway. Now, Hathaway, I don't believe, has fought since being knocked out by um, Dung Young Kim last year on the China card. Um, I could be wrong. Am I right? Uh, Someone do the internet check, check for me. Mine, check mine's right being now. Check for no, me because I, I got hold. It was the last time he fought. So he'll be it's coming off a loss. Though. Yeah, so he'll be coming off a loss. Um He's 17 and two, very dangerous, but he's not fought very often. Uh, he didn't even fight in 2013; only fought twice in 2012. So in the last three years, he's fought um, three times. So I mean, for some reason, he can't seem to stay busy. He only fought one time in 2011 too. He doesn't. He doesn't seem to stay active. I wonder where all these wins come from. Um, hmm. But yeah, I mean, uh, John Hathaway is a dangerous wrestler, being a uh, surprisingly for being a, a British fighter. Um, very tall. I believe he's like six one, six two. Um, 
I believe he trains in London. Let me check. London Shoot Fighters. I might, I might be correct. Yeah. So he's got a... I don't see him taking on Gunnar Nelson too well, though. I mean, I would think that Nelson gives him a, a really tight challenge on the ground. I think that uh, he, he he gives him dangerous uh, submissions off his back if how if Hathaway can take him down. Or I, I wouldn't be surprised if Nelson uh, finds his way uh, with Hathaway onto the ground and then gets a submission in like the midway through the fight. What do you got, Chris? Uh, yeah, I mean, Hathaway's pretty experienced. He has fights against Diego Sanchez. He beat, he beat Rick Story. I mean, he's beaten really tough. And, um, he's been really, uh, I lost you there. Say that one more time. That same experience against veterans like that. But we all know his jiu-jitsu pedigree is really, like, bar none. And I, I don't know. I mean, even though Gunner hasn't faced the same type of fighter Hathaway has, I feel like with the time off and just Gunner's skill set, I think he'll be able to take advantage. He might get the fight to the ground. And even if Hathaway gets the fight to the ground, I think we'll see Gunner's jiu-jitsu come into play. And his stand-up, even though he has that weird karate stance, it seems to work more, uh, other than his loss to Rick Story, which was a close fight. So, yeah, I think Gunner's going to do well on the feet and on the ground in this fight, and I think he'll find the finish too. Jonas? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with uh, Pac-Man here. Um, Hathaway not being busy, not being active, kind of works against him. Um, and Gunner, I mean, Gunner's just had some success recently. Uh, Gunner is, uh, he just has more to offer as far as a stand-up and on the ground than, uh, John, uh, than uh, Hathaway does. So I'm going to have to roll with Gunner Nelson to win that fight. Yeah, I... I'm really surprised that Nelson lost that fight, but the, I mean, Rick Story put on such a such a fantastic uh, game plan, and that's definitely um, that's definitely kudos to his his training camp, the, his new uh, at the MMA lab. He's he's won his last two uh, since being there, and that's very uh, interesting. I, I'm, I am interested in seeing where Rick Story also goes from here. Uh, obviously, I don't, does he have a fight lined up? I'm kind of curious. Let me see. Can someone look that up for me? I'm my internet's slow here. Rick Story. Rick Story, yeah. Just so we uh, can talk Rick about Story that real quick. Rick Story does not fight. Doesn't he should be have uh, he should fight next. Uh, has he fought since the Rick uh, Gunnar Nelson fight? I don't think he has. No. No. Hmm. I wonder when he's gonna fight next. You would think off of a win like that, you'd want to keep the momentum going. Yeah, I mean he's looked pretty good recently too his only losses and he's won three out of his last four and his two losses were to pile and gastel in both by split decision so the gastelum one i get the mike pile one i guess i can i mean pile's not very con in, uh, consistent but no pile looks like a killer sometimes and then sometimes yeah he's... yeah it's always that he's always had had that oh. going for him so but yeah, I mean to 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 beat a guy like Gunnar Nelson, and then he got his very first submission win prior to that. It's obvious that the MMA lab uh, is is where he should be, and he, he's done great since then. Um, it's funny is he's actually lost to Hathaway, I believe, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did. Yeah. All the way Ooh, back. Such good memory. Two thousand nine. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was his uh, UFC debut. Oh, he lost in his UFC debut to uh, Hathaway. Yep. Hmm. Just goes to show you how crazy welterweight is. A guy who beat Hathaway is gonna fight a guy who Nelson, or like Nelson, who lost to Rick Story, and Rick Story is also beaten Hendricks. <laughs> uh, it just shows you how wacky that division can be sometimes, man. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm Move on to another fight that hasn't been booked yet. So you didn't hear it from us that it's booked. It's not booked. It's being looked at for UFC 189 or at least sometime in the summer. Frank Mir versus Todd Duffy. Now, Jonas, we've talked about this about before. Um, me being a, a, a casual fan of Todd Duffy, I feel like that's a guy who um, certainly has uh, the potential to be a real um, threat in the heavyweight division. Um, how do you see that fight going, Mir and Duffy, if and when it happens? Well. You know, Duffy is a lot more crisp these days than Frank Mir. In what but, way? Uh, like in all-around fighting, or all around? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, he's uh, I'd say he's clearly in better condition. I don't think there's anybody in better condition at heavyweight than Todd Duffy right now. Uh, but that doesn't mean his skill.
skill set is you know, on par with the uh, conditioning. But at the same time, uh, Frank has been making some mistakes against some uh, other fighters. Uh, so that fight could be interesting. I, I could see Todd Duffy winning it, but also knowing what Frank is capable of when he's on, uh, Frank's a very dangerous man still. So it really could go either way. Yeah, it's a kind of interesting fight. As I see it, I think Duffy wins just because of he's a younger dude. He hasn't, he's not as worn. And um, he's just a freak of nature athletically. So when I look at it, I really don't see Frank Mir being able to take Todd Duffy down. And I don't think he wants to stand with him because, I mean, Todd Duffy, when he stands with guys, he puts them away pretty quickly. So, I mean, I could see Frank Mir maybe looking to pull, like, half guard and looking for a leg lock but outside of that or maybe i mean they're heavyweights so either one of them could get knocked out but i think it's more likely for mir to get knocked out by duffy so i saw outside of mir pulling half guard and looking for i don't know leg lock heel hook anything i see duffy winning that fight pretty quickly yeah mir's got to stay tough i i certainly believe mir has a chance he's still a very dangerous fighter on the ground um and on the feet, according to his last fight, you know, uh, but I, I believe Duffy is a more, um, what's the word? I, I Well, first of all, he's faster on the feet and, and with his hands than Bigfoot. Um, arguably has heavier punches, too. He probably punches harder. Um, debatable. But th th this uh, for Frank, I believe, you know, if he catches me, uh, Todd one good time, you never know. I, and I'm not saying that his chin's weak. I never say that about anybody in heavyweight or very much in uh, light heavyweight. Um, but, you know, uh, yeah, I believe if, if Duffy can, you know, keep keep good footwork, maintain good defense on, on the feet and make sure he doesn't get caught with anything crazy by Mir, um, then he probably uh, probably will own that fight, especially if Mir just – if he can't get him down. And I believe Mir will try to get him down. I think he'll, he'll, he'll cut his losses and try to get that fight to the ground before ever trying to strike with him. So – very interesting fight, especially I, 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 for Duffy. You know, if he can get a, a big win over a guy like Frank, it probably puts him in the rankings, considering how silly the rankings are at heavyweight right now. Um, in which case, you know, he could be getting some bigger name fights soon. And if he wants it, he could definitely be at the, in the top five of that division in like a year, which I would like to see. He's a young dude, hasn't fought too too often, um, still has a young career. I think that he, he poses a great threat possibly in the in the heavyweight division for that belt we'll see someday i personally would like to see it um other news that hit last week i don't think we talked about it but brendan schaub is actually going to be moving down from heavyweight to 205 um personally i you know i, I think maybe it's a good call as long as it is as long as it doesn't like you know kill him to do but um i don't know how do you think he does uh, at 205 chris um, I actually think he does pretty well, depending on how they match him up. Because um, just taking a quick look at the UFC rankings at light heavyweight. Oh God! Sorry, don't even. Yeah. Oh. The top of the rankings might be pretty. They're pretty hard hitters in there, and they have. Uh, they're just. It's a lot of depth at up top. You got guys like John Jones, obviously the champion. Anthony Johnson, Gustafson, DC. So I don't think he'll be able to beat those guys. But then when you look past maybe. You got OSP, who I can see Schaub having a decent fight with. Jimmy Manawa, he could beat. Uh, Shogun's beatable, and he's ranked 10th. Um, Noguera, Fabio Maldonado, none of these guys are world beaters down there. So, I mean, I could see Schaub making his way maybe into the top 10 of light heavyweight. I don't know if he gets much further than that, but I think he's an underrated fighter. I think he has pretty, he has good jujitsu skills. His stand-up isn't bad, and he's athletic. I mean, his athleticism might not carry over as much down to light heavyweight as it would at heavyweight, just because guys are bigger. But I, I think he'll do pretty well, uh, depending on the matchup he gets. What about uh, Jonas? If he's still there. Do we not have him? Ah, oh, crap, I lost him. Well, while I'm getting him back, I'll give my own two cents. Um, I personally, I think that, you know, being able to, what is it? What's the word? Being able to go down a division, especially from heavyweight, I think is very rare. Has anybody else really ever done that? Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it done before. We've seen like guys like Randy Tor fight at both weights, but not really. 
And uh, oh, actually, here we go. We have Jonas uh, added back on. You there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I was gonna say real quick before we go to Jonas's thoughts. Um, that not too many guys move down from heavyweight into light heavyweight, and that's mainly because you know there's so much free reign and weight. Uh, when it comes to heavyweight, obviously you could be from 206 to 265. There's so much free reign. Brandon Schaub went. Uh, I wonder how much he a actually actually weighs going into most fights, like his average. Um, I think he's yeah. around like in the high 240s. Really? Like that. See, that's a lot of weight to lose. And, yeah, but um, I mean, he's in pretty good shape at heavyweight. He is certainly. Yeah. I mean, you can he could drop. I think at Metamorphosis on his podcast on the Fighter and the Kid, I think he said he competed at like. 225, 230 at Metamorphos. So, I mean, if he can get down to 225, I don't think he'll have too much trouble cutting another 20 pounds. Maybe get down to 220, cut the rest in water. That was certainly, yeah. That sounds about right. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's a big cut. It's a, it is a big cut, but if he can walk around to like 230, I, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Yeah, I like I, I, yeah, I'm not saying it's crazy weight to lose, especially for a guy his size. I think it's actually obviously much easier to do it at his size when it's crazy that to think that a lot of lightweights pull that kind of same uh, oh, of course. weight light uh you know weight loss. So, uh, Jonas, your thoughts on his move down to 205 and how you think he'll do? You know, um, I think he runs into the same wall that he runs into at heavyweight, but uh, it'll just be different fighters that he. Uh, that that wall in, you know entails, so he'll he'll get some wins there. I'm not gonna say he's gonna you know suck at 205, but I, I don't see him breaking uh, top five at 205, just like he wouldn't break top five in the heavyweight division. So I mean, how do you think? Uh, what is it? Actually, you know, thinking about it, uh, a fight I'd like to see is either between him and uh, Jared Rochalt, who's coming off a good win, or him and Oleski Olenek. Those are good starter fights, I feel. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see him I can see him taking, I can see him beating Jared Rochalt. Uh, Alexi Olenek, that guy, wow. I remember the last fight he was involved in. When he, wasn't that against Rochalt? Wait, say that again. Alensky, uh, Alessi's last win was that knockout against Rochal, yeah. Against Rochal, yeah. So, yeah, gosh. I, I don't know. He might have problems with uh, Olenek, but I could see him competing very well against uh, Jared Rochal. Yeah, Olenek with that crazy one-punch power, certainly, and... Uh... But uh, I think Brandon could actually pose a threat to him standing up. He's got a he's got a more tight boxing style than Rochal has, so... Um... I think that he gives Olenek problems on the feet. I don't think it's his best in his best interest to take that fight to the ground, particularly. <laughs> uh, not against Olenek, a guy with 45 submissions or something crazy like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that'd yeah be... I could see him winning both of those fights. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and I mean, he had he had a string of good wins in, at heavyweight. You know, he beat guys like Cop, oh, he beat yeah. guys like Gonzaga, and I mean, beat guys like... Uh, yeah, Austin. when you really think about it, I mean, most people don't think he lost to Arlovsky, so... It's yeah, like he's on a terrible losing streak. Yeah, that that was a very yeah. I, had, I believe I had Shaw for two rounds, but that was a horrible fight anyway. So no, it's really it hard to give good, him prep. It definitely wasn't a good fight, but I mean, really, I say at least seventy five percent of people think Shaw won that fight. It wasn't a good fight. It was pretty close, but I mean, I think it's a little over dramatized that he has to drop down two or five, or else his career is over. And if he loses again. I mean, yeah, obviously you don't want to be on a three-fight losing streak, and that's not going to look good to anyone. But, I mean, I don't think it's as bad as people are making it seem. Yeah, especially for as shallow as heavyweight is, I, f I feel that there's probably more leniency up there um, than in most divisions. You know, especially when you got guys like, you know, um, uh, Frank Mir and Nog and other guys that are on crazy losing streaks right now, or that at were at some point and that they're still in there and could still possibly fight again. Um, but yeah, I mean, Shaw's had some decent wins, like the Matt Mitrione being one of his most impressive as of rec uh, at most recently. Um, yeah, I think uh, the, the, those are the two fights I'd like to see him in next. Uh, anybody below those guys in mid-tier rankings, I, I wouldn't want to see. I, I think that'd be uh, unfair. But you know, it depends on what he wants to do. So, um, with that, we'll move on to the next bit of news. Um, today, 
as of press time, which will be today, April 2nd, uh, Rampage Jackson actually has to go to court to explain his uh, – to explain with Bellator – well, I think it's more on Bellator. Bellator has to explain why Rampage, if he fights for the UFC, come whenever that fight is. I believe it's in two weeks from this Saturday. Yeah, so from that, he's going to have to explain in court why uh, – or they're going to have to explain in court why Rampage can't fight. And uh, I personally think that Rampage and the UFC are in the clear because I, I can't imagine that the UFC didn't do their due diligence in making sure that – you know, they sign Rampage and make sure that, you know, if there's nothing wrong with it hereafter. But um, that's certainly something that the UFC cannot afford if Rampage, um, if he's, uh, if he, I guess, if he loses this day in court here. Um, first off, what do you think would happen if, if he gets pulled off the 186 card? Uh, Chris? Um, I mean, it would suck, obviously. Do you think they cancel that card? Really, that card's not too great as it is. We have a title fight between Demetrius Johnson, Kyoji Horiguchi, which many people are expecting to be one-sided, and then that's the co-main event, isn't it? <sighs> uh, that is a co-main event. Yeah, I mean, him and it's Fabio. Not even much of a co-main event. Imagine that being taken away, and then we have who's next? Bisbing Dalloway. Yeah, All Bisbing right. Dalloway. That's, I mean, Bisbing's a name, but it's not co-main event pay-per-view caliber fight either is Rampage versus Maldonado but I mean well I disagree there but go ahead how do you disagree I mean Rampage, Rampage is, is totally between, from, from is name value name. he's totally a co-main event no name. he's a big name I'm not disputing that I'm disputing the fact that that fight is not a pay-per-view co-main event well I'm saying his name is enough to put him in the co-main oh, event yeah, is Fabio it's Maldonado it's co-main event material no I don't believe so I, I don't no. believe the fight itself is co-main event but that's, you can put to, him in a co-main event across, but yeah I guess I'm saying that his name isn't I'm saying that that fight is I think his name carries enough merit to make it a co-main yeah, so event yeah so I'm agreeing with you okay was he agreeing with me, Jonas? I don't think he was. <laughs> I think he was. Oh, all right, fine. Um, <laughs> I'm saying, Rampage, we're saying the same thing here. I don't think that fight is a co-main event for a pay-per-view. And if that gets taken away, you have Bisping Dalloway, which is kind of the same. We have a big name, a decent fight, but it's nothing really more than that. And it's probably less exciting. And then this card isn't – it's not a pay-per-view card. It doesn't look like a pay-per-view card. It just – it is a pay-per-view, but it doesn't look like one. And losing let's, Rampage would make it that much worse. Let's, uh, let's look at the rest of this card. For me, I just want to do my due diligence. It has some fun fights on it. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but it's not a pay-per-view caliber card, and we spoke about this on the last podcast. I'm probably inclined to agree with you. I just got to double-check because I forget all the fights that are on the card. And maybe that it's in itself speaks to how, you know – what little star power this card may have, because usually yeah. I, I'm I'm really good about this stuff, but yeah, maybe I'm not, uh, or maybe I just forgot. But yeah, I mean, certainly 186 is one of those cards where people were looking forward to it. Uh, of course, the most like uh, what is it? The thing I was the fight I was looking forward to the most was um, you uh, the Dalloway Barral fight or Dalloway <laughs> Dillashaw Barral fight, um, and that's very uh. It's very unfortunate that that fight is um, not happening. It's really bumming me out now that I'm thinking about it. But, you know, I, I personally um, think that the fight or the fight card will do all right. But just to explain more so what's going on with the uh, the uh, Rampage thing, for anybody that doesn't already know, um, it's well publicized. But, you know, Jackson claims that the terms of his contract that he signed with Bellator were weren't met basically so he's saying that he wasn't um given uh you know his portion of pay-per-view returns when he competed on this card against i believe it was king mo right um yes yeah um and he's saying that his his bout down there were not properly he's saying that also like his list of things that he said was wrong with it, it wasn't properly promoted he wasn't given uh the entertainment opportunities that uh that were promised to him to like beat that, that were supposed to come with it. And, uh, and he's saying that they were in breach of their contract. And, um, and so, you know, what Bellator says is that they've never breached their contract with Jackson. And they're saying that he's, the, they're actually, what they're going to do is say in court that Jackson is the one who breached contract with them. And so they're going to ask them, uh, 
the the court for probably what's no, what's called a preliminary injunction, which would stop Jackson from competing at UFC 186, and um, uh, which you know, and and they would, that would stop her from competing in, in any fight outside of um, Bellator. Uh, but it's just a decision. So before the merits of the case are decided or anything, you know, one, um, uh, all it would really do, well. Not all, but it, it would really it would stop him from competing at 186 if they're granted it. Um, but the man, I mean, yeah, Bellator's whole argument is actually pretty complicated. But um, what do you think about if that fight gets pulled off 186? Would that stop you from watching, Jonas? Not necessarily. Um, I'd hate for that card to lose that fight, but uh, at the same time, I honestly don't see how. Bellator could actually successfully pull off this uh, injunction. Um, if if you go deeper into what the uh, dispute is, uh, Rampage actually aired out some grievances that uh, Bellator failed to uh, respond to. And that's the basis on which uh, Rampage stands to uh, say that Bellator is in breach of the contract. So when they didn't, uh, when they didn't uh, respond to his grievances, in the contract, as he says, it was stated that he could uh, terminate his contract on his own for them, you know, because they didn't uh, respond to his grievances. So if, if that can't be proven false, then uh, Rampage will be fighting mm-hmm. for the UFC. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Bell- um, reading over Bellator's... Um- whole thing i made an article about it uh, on on sports um what what it's what they're also saying is that they don't want to ruin his image or anything but that they want him to compete for their promotion their promotion only and that's not like they're trying to throw him under the bus in any way but it seems more so that they're trying to do that to the ufc here i mean why else would you um uh do it so close to the event, you know, literally two and a half weeks away from the event, I feel. And that's just maybe a conspiracy way of looking at it. But, you know, especially because they, they waited until like a couple weeks after he had signed to fight that fight. You know what I mean? And I feel like the timing was everything here. And uh, um, I don't know. Am I crazy for thinking that, Chris? Not really. I mean, they, oh, they, Jonas, were, talking about, they were talking about doing this back in January. Yeah. So. That's the other issue. I, I, it's really up to the court to decide when they want to uh, hear uh, Bellator's case. So as far as the scheduling goes, that's that's not on Bellator's or Viacom's part in any way. That was all based on the court. That's all up to the court to decide when they want to hear it. So Yeah, we don't really know the ins and outs of it all, as Jonas is saying right now. Well, but like uh, here's here's the here's the reality. There is a possibility that Bellator gets success at least on the injunction, which is all that would need to uh, be approved for Rampage to not fight in two weeks. Oh yeah, that's in possible, which case, but uh-huh. we, don't know, we don't know exactly what goes on. We can't really say that. With we can't affirmatively say that because we honestly don't know. We're not involved that deep into it. We don't have the sources to confirm this so you really can't say anything on that part you could just speculate yeah what jack what jackson is saying is uh, another thing is that you know not only was it with pay-per-views but it was with other parts of his contract that he signed such as you know uh, his management getting paid in certain uh, order because of promotion and promoting uh in which they helped um but uh the, the entire case isn't also based on um, just the pay-per-view and just the money. Rampage is actually counters, uh, countering this, not in court tomorrow or today, rather. Um, but you know, if, if it gets that far, um, he would be, uh, you know, counter counter suing them for you know breach of other things such as promotion and and uh, other things he was promised in his contract, which is a very long list. Like he was supposed to get like a car and something, all kinds of other shit. Um, you know, it, it, it's really wild, and I just hope that, you know, at least for the uh, sake of the UFC, that they don't lose in this event. Uh, 
I don't think anybody want. It, it, it sucks because I think Bellator is making themselves look like like bad guys here, and I don't know if that's me, but it doesn't make me want to root for them any more or less right now. Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, Bellator has the right, if you will, mm-hmm. to uh, I guess pursue what they feel is uh, their employee. Oh, definitely. So I mean, I, I can't I can't call them the bad guys in this situation. But they might be going about it wrong. I mean, it's just, I mean, based on what I know, and I don't know all of it, as Chris stated earlier, I certainly don't know all the ins and outs of what's happened. But based on the information that I've gathered and have uh, internalized and kept up with, uh, they're just basically grasping at straws. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe they do know what they're doing, and maybe... uh, UFC on being a free agent. Re- repeat that last sentence, Jonas. I kind of lost you there. So maybe it could be a matter of uh, Rampage misinforming or re- misrepresenting himself as being a free agent. Who knows? Mm-hmm. There are a whole bunch of possibilities right now. Definitely. I uh, I agree and with I'm you not there. Just he did that intentionally, but he very well could have if he doesn't fully understand. Uh, his contract or his end of the contract terms. Yeah, I'm not asking well, he does it, but then. it's very um, it's very odd. But you're right about one thing that I didn't think about. They are well within their right if they believe that yeah. they are right to get Rampage back under their promotion. Um, well, I'm especially sure. you know if Rampage is in the wrong here, which he very, he very well could be. I mean, again, we don't know all the details, but we just know it's about he said, she said. Uh, Rampage says that he didn't get paid. He's saying that his management didn't get paid, and he didn't get everything he was promised in his contract, so that he opted out. If, but you never know. Bellator could come up with court with paperwork saying uh, he's full of shit. We did pay him. <laughs> you know, here's the paperwork. Yeah. Here's the money transfer uh, scripts and all this such. He got paid. He did this. All this, that, and the other. And so, you know, he should be uh he should be signed with us. We have his likeness, his name, uh, from the contract. Um, it makes me wonder what the UFC thinks about this whole deal too. It's well, like, you I'm know. sure both organizations had their uh, lawyers review the contract, and they both yes. obviously think they're in the right either way. So I guess we just gotta wait until a few hours and just see how it plays out. Not too see how much. it plays out. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Keep the Twitter around 4:30 ish because that's when uh, I believe the uh, Pacific time, because uh, the the court will be out here in the West Coast. So Pacific yes, time, um, that that'll be the time to check out and see what's going on. And of course, when it uh, when we do find out, we'll report it as a press time. We don't hasn't happened yet. So, um, uh, you ready to move on to talk about UFC Fight Night coming up this Saturday? We are definitely going to do that now. Yes. Uh, first off, I got to say this card is actually pr- looking pretty decent. I like this card. This card looks better than UFC 186. Oh, you shit talker! Yeah. <laughs> All right. Real, no, it does. I'm not even joking. It does. I. It, I, all right, whatever. Forget you guys. Um, <laughs> I think that the main event is certainly uh, an exciting one. Um, uh, Chad Mendes, this is UFC Fight Night 63? Yeah. Yeah, 63. Uh, Mendes versus Lamas is a huge featherweight fight in the division. Um, really tells who goes where. You know, I mean, Mendes and Lamas have both lost to Aldo. Um, you never know if Mendez wins this and say Connor wins against Aldo or you never know what could happen there. That could be the next defense for Connor. Um, we also have, uh, what is it? Jorge Masvidal versus Al Iaquinta in the co-main event. I love that fight. I know you do too, Chris. Um, what is it? Looking at this, I, I'm excited more so for the co-main just cause that seems like fight of the night, uh, yeah, fireworks right there. That's fight of the night material right, right there. Mm-hmm. Could be some fireworks in that one. Absolutely. Yep. Let's work out from the uh, bottom of this card. We'll go ahead and uh, see what we got. Justin Jones versus Ronald Sterling. Now, Justin Jones did uh, very well against uh, Corey Anderson and uh, taking him to a decision. Uh, even though he lost, he fought very competitively. Um, it's fighting Ronald Stallings. Uh, we have a Timothy Johnson versus Shamil Abder. Uh, Hemov and both men making their debut. Gray the Bully Maynard makes his return uh, against Alexander Yakovlev. Yakovlev. Right. Well, I mean, 
it's very interesting to see what happens with Gray here. Um, I believe. I don't like this. Huh? I don't like this. You don't like this? Why don't you like this? I, the guy, I don't want to see Gray Manor fight anymore. Why? It's a man. <laughs> Fine. We won't. We won't even ask I you mean, about it then. I don't care. No, he's just like I don't know. He's, I I don't want to see it anymore. These guys just seem like they're taking too much brain damage. You think Gray's a guy that's taking too much brain damage? Dude, he's getting. I mean, he hasn't even looked like he's been there in his last two fights. Well, the Nate Diaz fight that was certainly the no, last three fights. I mean, well, I know. I'm just bringing up one of them. No, no, no. I I said last two fights. I meant last three fights. That's true. The TJ Grant was certainly the that uh, started it. Yeah. Yeah, the TJ Grant knockout was the worst. The Frankie Edgar knockout wasn't any better. <laughs> um, yeah. Who did he I mean, last lose to? Wasn't Nate? He I know lost he fought to Ross before. Pearson. Did he get knocked out? I believe he yeah, did. He's yes, been right. TKO. He's been yeah. knocked out in four of his last five fights, and he beat Clay Guida by split decision. He's eleven and four. So, and he's lost all of his four losses in the last five fights. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, and he has a draw just before that to Frankie. He was undefeated. Yeah, so. that was at one twenty-five. That was a great fight. Um, yeah, he went from fighting for the belt twice to beating Three Clay Guida. And then getting knocked out three times straight. Dude, I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that Guida fight. Guida spent a whole lot of time running away from uh, yeah. Or, yeah, he was God. playing. He was playing sideways hopscotch with him. It was weird. Yeah. It was, it was, it was so. Really so but I, uh, I just, I don't like this. I don't mean. I don't know how dangerous Shikovlev is, but I. Who is he? He's fought in the UFC before. Let's he look. lost to Nico Musoki and Damian Maya. He beat Paul Daly. Has he? Did he? Let's see. Let's see. He's twenty-one and seven and one. Not bad. Um, thirty six foot one for lightweight. Holy shit, that's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, that's tall. Yeah. Yeah, he used to fight at one seventy. I mean, I, yeah. I, he obviously hasn't fought the same competition Gray Maynard has, but mm -hmm. regardless, I don't think Gray Maynard is what he was. I don't know how good Jakovlev is, but I don't. Think this guy, yeah, fought recent. Yeah, I'm thinking about it now. He fought welterweight, so he's dropping the 155. I'd be surprised if this guy even makes weight. Um, because this is his first fight at lightweight. Is this a or it could be a welterweight? No. Is no, it I think it's at lightweight. No, it's at welterweight. Gray Maynard's going up. He's going up to welterweight. Wow. What the fuck? Yeah, looking at it's a, on the official page. It says this is a welterweight fight. So Gray Maynard's I don't know going if that up. Helps him or not. I don't think it does. What the? Because I mean, he's not cutting the water weight, so his brain's obviously going to be more protected. So that helps. <laughs> I guess. That's true. <laughs> this is yeah. weird. It is true. When you cut water, it comes in your brain. No, I get that. Protected. Yeah, it's just weird that he's going up in welterweight. I'm surprised this yeah, wasn't I more mean, uh, promoted, the fact that he was moving up. Yeah. yeah, publicized that he was moving I up mean, to welterweight. This is crazy. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if it helps him or not because he is a big dude at 155, and maybe he won't get rattled this easily because he does mm -hmm. suck a lot of weight. But yeah. Ugh, I'm not liking it. I just see on UFC.com, though, it says both of their weights at 155, so I, are you sure it's at welterweight? It says here it's at welterweight. Maybe. Uh, where are you reading it from? On UFC.com. Oh, I'm reading it on SirDog. SirDog, you're full of shit. Yeah, I have no clue. It could be the way. Probably lightweight, then. We'll see. I, don't I, don't know. Know. I, I want confirmation we'll on this, though. I really want confirmation on this, though. Let me see. I know a guy that would not lie. Let's see. Let's go to Gray Maynard's Twitter and see if he maybe is telling, the, telling it like it is. I kind of want to know. In the meantime, you guys talk about the next fight, uh, Lauren Taylor versus Liz Carmouche. Jonas, what do you think of that fight? Uh, Liz Carmouche needs this one. Very, she very really much, yes. Lauren really needs yeah. this one. Because, good gosh, she's just had a really rough time ever since losing to Ronda. Um. I don't know. I don't know much about uh, Lauren Taylor all that much, but, Lauren uh, Murphy. or Murphy, I'm sorry, Lauren Murphy, uh, don't know much about her at all. Did I say Taylor? I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought, my bad. Yeah, I heard Taylor. thought I heard Taylor, see, I'm not crazy. But yeah, man, I don't know much about her, but I do know that, uh, Liz has not had a great run, and she desperately needs this win, so I don't know if desperation is going to kick in and, uh, kick her into overdrive and get this win, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these women's fights, they're really hard to call just because some of them haven't had as many fights and then they come out there and they look really good. Like, Lauren Murphy fought Sarah McMahon not in her last fight, 
And she looked, she had a really good guard. She was really active, and a lot of people thought she beat Sarah McMahon. It wound up being a split decision, too. So, I mean, it's definitely possible. But on the feet, I think Liz Carmouche can do a little bit of damage, even though she hasn't looked that great. She has been facing top competition. She lost to Ronda, and then she beat uh, Jessica Andrade, and then lost to Alexis Davis and Misha Tate. So, and I also think if she's able to get Murphy down, she'll be able to pass her guard. She'll be able to work from the top. So, I feel confident Liz Carmouche will win, but I'm not entirely sure. I, I think I would go with Carmouche in this one, though. Same here. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I would, too. Yeah, I got I got Carmouche only because, uh, yeah, like you said, she's faced top competition and against other competition that wasn't, like, ranked. Um, she's done tremendously well. She's so uh, heavy. Um, what is it? She's very uh, active on the ground, on top. She fights really uh, – aggressively high paced you know she's got great cardio because of that and um or the other way around but you know she does really um really well against uh fighters she's supposed to be i would think that this is a fight where she's supposed to win um but yeah taylor definitely uh fights strong off her back but if you know carmusha uh, makes it active enough puts enough pressure i believe she's going to be able to um, work around any offense she tries to input from the bottom and gets the probably get the tko later on yeah, and this is a a lightweight fight, Gray Maynard and the uh, the Russian guy here. So definitely, uh, so f wow, six foot one, moving down to one fifty five. That's a that's a lot to to ask for a guy, especially yeah, if he's gonna fa face a guy who's you know. Well, I guess maybe it, it evens out considering he's a former title challenger, but he's lose he's, he's coming off a three fight losing streak. So yeah. I um, mean, he doesn't look huge, Yakovlev, even though he is tall. He maybe has like the Donald Cerrone type body where he can make the weight. If he, yeah, if he's got, well, I mean, yeah, I've seen him fight before. I remember the Maya fight where Maya continued to get at the mount and and uh, and, and nearly finish it from there. <clears throat> um, with that being said, yeah, I think uh, I think I, I think more so I'm gonna I'm leaning toward the Russian guy then. If he can make the weight successfully, if he can stay healthy throughout the whole. Uh, camp then uh, he probably beats Maynard I think Maynard yeah his time is kind of kind of showing up on him um especially yeah. since uh what is it he's the the not not by too much the younger guy but he's the younger guy and uh he, he hasn't gotten knocked out ever in his career um should be interesting I definitely right, want to see so how he does coming back we'll move on to the next fight Dustin Poirier Dustin making his Poirier. debut at 155 speaking of has he fought at 55 in the past I believe he has yeah, yeah, yes, but, he yeah. I can swear yeah, he has before exactly. he got into the UFC. Certainly, um, Carlos Diego Ferreira, my dude, and this is where I'm stuck because I love both guys. D Carlos Diego Ferreira uh, fought for Legacy FC, fought numerous times on Access TV. He's a very credible jujitsu guy, and uh, that just tells you how badass his his uh, you know Benel Dariush is, considering he was yeah. able to beat this guy. Um, and that's another fight we didn't really talk about, but we'll get to that later. Um, this fight is certainly a huge fight for Poirier. First of all, it really shows where he's going to be at in this division. And another thing is that Diego Ferreira is still kind of fresh in this division himself, um, in the UFC's lightweight division. And um, But Diego Ferreira is no joke. That's a high order or, or a tall order for uh, Poirier. And, uh, man, that's such a hard one to call. I don't know. Um being being as good as both men are on the ground, but I believe Ferrer is better. But you know, it's yeah, just agree. such a really, it's 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 really, ah, man, I can't I can't. They're both so good on the feet and on the ground that it, it, this is a really really this is gonna be a fun fight. This is also fight of the night candidate right here, if there yeah, ever was one. How the, if uh, Ferreira has much of a size advantage going in there because Poirier hasn't fought a fifty five in a while and. I don't know how big Ferrer is, but I'm assuming he'll have. He's about right as big. He's not too big. He's about your average lightweight size. He's like five ten. Um, yeah. You know, and so. then um, as this fight, as I look at it, I think Ferrer has a bit of a grappling advantage. But Certainly. I don't see Poirier getting submitted here, and then I think Poirier is a bit better on the feet. I think he'll have answers for Ferrer, and he'll use his boxing, use his kickboxing, and just. Look to keep him at range with his punches. I could tell you, I think Poirier is going to come away with this one. I am actually going to disagree. I think Ferreira is going to make it a very difficult fight for Poirier. I think he uh, takes it to the ground. 
I think he uh, is able to uh, win the rounds, certainly fight for the submission, but I think Poirier fights off enough to where he uh, makes it a grueling fight for both men. Um, I think Farad takes it in the decision. Jonas, tiebreaker. I've got uh, Poirier winning by ah, Boom. Biatches. Yeah, All right. I've got Poirier winning by decision just because, uh, as Chris said, uh, I know that Poirier is pretty damn good on the stand-up, and uh, that's where he's going to try and keep it. And he's not bad at uh, stuffing the takedown either, honestly. Uh, <laughs> not that not that Fajero is bad at it. Fajero is incredible on the ground. Um, I have seen some of his fights as well. Uh, he's no pushover. And this fight this fight really will uh, be a statement for either whoever wins. So I, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, this is easily one of the more... Um, was it closely contested matchups on paper that we have on this card? Certainly, at, next to that with Ali Quinta and Jorge Masvidal, especially, um, as well as Mendes Lamas, that could also be one where you can argue it's very closely matched up. This is uh, okay. You win. It is better than 186. I give up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so many good close matchups that I, I'm in love with, especially this next one. But I'm very biased. Cousin Robbie Peralta. Uh, or Robert Problems right. Peralta to everybody else. Um, we'll be taking on Clay the Carpenter Guida. Good luck, cousin. Uh, I'm obviously biased in this fight, so I'm going to step away and let you guys talk about it. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, you got to put me on the spot, don't you? Yeah, well, yep. Yeah. Clay, um, Clay Guida at 145. Don't too much about your cousin, to how, be honest. How dare I've you? How I've dare him, you? I've seen him fight. I, I just have. don't know too much about him. I'll well, say that. I'll say this. He trains uh, – he's extensively more of a boxer. Uh, you know, if you look at his all of his wins, uh, most of which are are, are, a, uh, are knockout wins, uh, except for the Honey Jason one. But I knew he could win that one. Sure enough, he did. I was the only one who <laughs> picked that him to win that one. Sure enough, he did. But I think I've picked him to win every fight that he's fought in the UFC thus far. So yeah. 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 You can't pick against your family. True. Um, kind of hard to do. I'm yeah. going for Cuz. Awesome, John. Yes. Well, he's. I believe Robbie is the better uh, striker. I think Clay Guida is the better grappler. I'll be fair and say that uh, Robbie uh, is, is known more for it, so for his jujitsu than any wrestling. I don't believe he's uh, much of a wrestler. Um, he's got the hands, though. I certainly believe that he could put Clay away if this stays on the feet. Um. I also think that, you know, if he can uh, defend against the takedowns, that's the number one thing. He does that, he wins this fight, I believe. I think he's, I think he uh, does what Gray Maynard did to him and kind of just charges him down. And if Clay doesn't want to engage, he runs away if he can't get the takedown. In which case, I believe uh, Robert Peralta gets the win. Robert Problems Peralta gets the win here. Probably gets performance of the night, too. Uh. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm having a tough time with this just because... Weed is really hard to put away. He is, yeah. certainly. Mendez is the only guy to do it on, with hands. You know, so. Yeah, that's the problem. And I see if Weed just keeps going after that takedown, he might be able to get one eventually, and he might just try to stay on top and just chill. Oh, yeah. Probably. That's the way I see him winning this fight. If not, I could see Peralta winning. If he's able to stuff the takedown, I could see Peralta winning. If Weed is able to get the takedown. Yeah, at him. least by decision. I see him winning by decision here. Yeah, um, Guida, as uh, Chris said, he's nearly impossible to knock out, to put away. Uh, and, God, that gas tank is still one of the best I've ever seen in MMA. The guy just doesn't get tired. Yeah, it's in contendership with, I would say, like uh, a guy like Bisping or Kane. Certainly. Bisping or Kane, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Move on to the next fight. Milana Dudieva versus the Ultimate Fighter Season 18 winner who will finally be making her comeback this weekend. We've been excited about this one. Juliana Pena, the the Venezuela vixen. Um, I've been excited to see her come back. She's a very aggressive fighter. Uh, if anybody remembers her appearances on the uh, on the Ultimate Fighter, she is a tough chick she uh first of all she utilizes her wrestling so well she's got a, a very dangerous top game that girl puts anybody away if she finds the mount um and uh i'm sure she's also very dangerous with submissions uh not that we've seen it but um she this is definitely a tall order for melena melena is actually a, a very tough fighter in her own right though uh last winning her last fight very close decision with liz Phil uh i forget her name liz phillips yeah, I could be. I I think that that's what it is. But uh, she's got a uh, 
uh, a very uh, experienced record, 25 years old, but already 11 and three against uh, Pena's four and two. But it just seems like Pena's got um, a, a more aggressive style, a more tactical game plan. When the like that, her wrestling just seems to. I think it'll get it done in there. Uh, just to put it shortly, Jonas, what do you got? Uh, when did Juliana Pena last fight? Was that in? Uh, that was like almost two years ago. Like, it was when she won the Ultimate Fighter. She didn't fight in. Uh, she didn't fight in 171. Um, no, she's been injured this whole time. Yeah. She's uh, she she what is it? She was train. Uh, her story is that she trained. She was training at her gym in Seattle, with uh, the same gym Michael Chiesa and Sam Cecilia train at, right. and uh, yeah. she was training with this other guy who also fights at bantamweight. Uh, I don't believe his name was ever put out there, but um, yeah, they were grappling and he was being excessively uh, aggressive in their sparring, and uh, he jumped on her back, and. Uh, blew her knee out essentially in 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 multiple like her acl mcl everything all torn uh, up MCL, yeah MCL. so she's been out for about two years now and yeah, uh november of 2013 oh almost two years now about a, yeah about a year and a half a year and a half more so yeah so yeah. It, this is a this is a big comeback for her you know it's finally coming off the uh win of the ultimate fighter to finally fight it should be very interesting to see how she does um uh i i think that pena with her solid wrestling and, and her very aggressive uh, top game in ground and pound, I think she gets the win here. Probably by decision, though. I don't think she'll finish this chick because she's very good off her back. Um, with that said, Pagman, your final thoughts. Um, yeah, I mean, it is good to see her come back as I think she's the only one who could be a contender from that season of the Ultimate Fighter and mix things up in the division a little bit, maybe bring a new challenge. But, um. I, yeah, I think she'll be able to get the win here as long as her injury doesn't hold her back in any way. She's a good wrestler. She'll get the fight to the mat. I can see her finishing it. I mean, if she doesn't get caught with a submission, I can see her if finishing it. If she finds her way to the mount, she finishes this Yeah. You know? If she can get to mount, she can finish. Every she fight where she's been in the mount, she finished the fight. So. Yeah. I mean, if she Says can a get lot. to mount, she can finish the fight without a doubt. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be the where we see. Because, I mean... I don't think Milana's going to catch her. I don't think she's going to be able to go for a takedown. I think Pena's a bigger girl. I think she's stronger. And yeah, I think she'll be able to put her on her back. We just got to see where it goes from there. I think Pena will be able to come out with this one. And uh, I think we'll see a finish. Wow. All right. Good call. Jonas, you said your prediction already, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got Pena winning. We'll see. Venezuela Vixen making her comeback this Saturday. Move on to... The third from last fight of the card, Mitchell Clark versus well, – what is – why is it blacked out? Oh, uh, Michael, Michael Chiesa. Chiesa. Wow. Michael Chiesa now, that's a big fight for sure for both men. Mitchell Clark has actually had some pretty impressive wins. He's beaten the guy in the co-main event, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. He beat, yeah, he beat Al Iaquino. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's got to be weird for Al <laughs> – for both of them actually to have beaten him and he's on the yeah, co-main. Yeah, for them to have both beaten him, and then yet I Al is the guy in the coma. <laughs> um, should be uh, you know definitely speaks to their level of grappling expertise. Um, what is it? I know he's fought somebody else. Uh, who's he fought? Oh, John McGuire. That's right. He's the one who sent John McGuire packet from the UFC, if I recall. Um, got a got a decision victory. I don't know if he's fought much else in the UFC, but. Can someone look it up? How many fights has he had? I'm going off memory here. Uh, Mitch Clark. Let's see. Like, who did he fight in his debut? I'm curious. Before I make any predictions. Because I know how Michael fights. I've only seen Mitch Mitchell Clark beat Ali Mitch Quinta. Clark, uh, lost to John Cholish. In his debut in 2011. Then he lost to Anton... Kyovinev and then beat John McGuire and Al. Oh, yes, that's right. Okay. Well, both guys are very skilled on the ground. Um, it really depends on the striking here, then, I, I would think. Then, in which case, I think uh, Kiesa wins. I've not seen anything from, Klitsch, or from Clark's uh, stand up that says that he's able to beat Kiesa on the stand-up. So with that being said, I think I'll go with Kiesa, and that's only based on how little I know, to be to be realistically fair. So with that being said, uh, I'll hand it over to you, Pagman. 
Uh, yeah, I gotta agree with you again. I think KS is gonna come out with the win. Um, it, yeah, I mean they're both very good submission guys. They both have have similar skills in that aspect. But as we saw in the Ally Kinta fight, uh, he Mitch Clark didn't have anything to offer him on the feet. Al was able to get the takedown. He just got caught being a little bit sloppy there in a weird, weird submission. It was like off the cage. Yeah, I remember that. Just, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was out of nowhere. Yeah, it was an odd position for it too. But um, yeah, he does have some tricks. But aside from that, I think Kies is going to be able to use it. Kies has pretty good stand up. He doesn't have the best stand up, but I mean, we saw him against Joe Lozano. He didn't look bad until that cut. We saw him against uh, Masvidal. He had Masvidal hurt at one point in that fight. So I think Kies will be able to find uh, good use of his stand up and maybe be able to finish this one. Jonas. Yeah, I think it's pretty even on the ground, so it is going to have to come down to the stand-up. And I've got Michael Chiesa stand-up being a little better than Mitch Clark, so I'm going with Michael Chiesa. All right, there we go. Michael Chiesa all the way down the board. Mitchell Clark, we'll see if he can pull the upset here. Um, move on to the co-main event of the evening. One of my favorite fights on the card. Oh, this is a great one. Jorge Masvidal versus the very hot and fiery ally, Quinta. Uh, of course, a lightweight bout. Now, this is very hard for me to say, but I believe as as crazy uh, good as Al has looked lately, I believe Jorge Masvidal is going to find a way to win this fight. I think that he's going to be able to, you know, I think he's such a huge threat on the ground for Al. Um, then, Al then, and then, I, then I would hope that Al realizes that. You know, if he tries taking this to the ground, he's got to realize that the guy is no joke on off his back. He doesn't let guys pass too, very, uh, too often. He's a... Uh, his guard is extremely tight. He's great at sweeps. He's also great at finding submissions uh, in very odd angles, uh, when even in standing, uh, which is dangerous for a, gal, a guy like Al historically. You know what I mean? So, with that being said, I got to go with uh, the uh, the taller, bigger uh, Jorge Masvidal, who I think also could probably give him some issues on the feet. So, I think uh, Jorge is more experienced, more ready, more prepared, less scared. Um, and we'll probably uh, come away with the victory here. Uh, if not by submission, then probably by decision. Chris? Uh, I got to disagree with you on this I one. know you would. Uh, I know. I'm it's go okay. with Ally Akinta. <laughs> yep. That's your boy. I, I got you. I know. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I got to go with Al. I just think I didn't. Al's been liking his stand-up late. Lately, he's been liking to fight on the feet, and he's looked really good. I mean, he finished Ross Pearson, who's known as one of the better boxers at lightweight. He's finished uh, Joe Lozon. He finished Rodrigo Dam. His only loss in his last, I think, seven fights has been to Mitch Clark, and it was just a slip-up. He got caught. But And I think if he does look to take this down, I don't think Masvidal's going to submit him. I think he's learned his lesson off that, and I... um. Yeah, Masvidal has struggled against some wrestlers. He lost to Rustam Kabalov, who was able to get him down. He lost to Gilbert Melendez back at Strike Force, but since then he hasn't lost much either, and he's been able to beat some pretty good guys. So I think Al's gonna want to mix it up in this one. I think he'll do all right on the feet if he's if he has success on the feet to keep it there. But if uh, Masvidal is keeping up with him or being able to use his reach. Al might want to take it down. I think if he does, I don't think he'll get choked out. I think he'll be able to keep a good top game, and I think he'll come away with a decision. But it's going to be a fun fight. I can see it going either way. And I think I'm going to call fight of the night on this one. Ooh, Jonas. Yeah, it really could go either way. Um, I'm going to pick game bread. I'm going with Masvidal to win this one. Um, just because, you know, he's got a little more experience, and he's, he's just he's awesome. He's awesome all around. And not that Alan Akinta is bad at all either. He's pretty damn good. He's Every fight I've seen him in, he's been impressive to me. Uh, but I, I just have to – there can only be one winner, and I'm picking Masvidal. Yeah, I mean, one thing that Chris uh, pointed out too is that, you know, um, he thinks that Al's got the better striking here, being that he's taken out Ross Pearson. Not that that is an impressive win. That is a great striker, but Ross Pearson is a great boxer. Jorge Masvidal mixes it up everywhere. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think the striking's actually pretty even. I just think Al's looked very good striking recently, and I think he can strike with uh, Jorge. I think if he gets into trouble, because Jorge is a bigger guy, and he has more reach, he uses his straight punches very well. 
So if Al gets in any trouble with that, I think he can go to his wrestling, and I think he'll find success there. Because I don't, or he's only had a couple submissions in his career. That doesn't mean he's not a good grappler. But I think Al can control him off his back and win the rounds that way. Fair enough. Very close fight, certainly. Uh, Got to go with Game Bread, though. Moving on to the main event of the evening. Oh, Chad, Chad Money Mendez versus Ricardo the Bully Lamas. Uh, I really um, am torn with this. Um, I like both guys and being and being so, but just just to get right to it, I think Mendez is probably going to give Lamas a very very difficult time by taking him down a lot. Uh, I think Mendez is really good at actually. He, he's shown in the Aldo fight and the fights prior that he's really gotten great at, um, at being able to change level change and uh, not as good as like, say a Frankie Edgar, but certainly up to a level where you take it to a main event caliber fighter like Ricardo Lamas and it would actually be effective. Um, so it's going to be on Lamas and his, and his, uh, prepared counter striking style. If it is to be able to, to beat a guy like Chad money Mendez. So with that being said, the only guy who's ever bet beaten Mendez, uh, is Jose Aldo. And that speaks a lot to how good Ricardo is. Ricardo has lost to Aldo and two other fighters. So with that being said, I, I could see why Mendez is the favorite and, and, and what is it? Three to one. I'm trying to do the math. Three to one here. Yeah, he's the three to one favorite. I got Money Mendez. I believe he takes him across all five rounds, wins at least three of them, gets the uh, decision victory. Jonas. I'm going. I'm picking the upset. <gasps> Big man for Yeah. Uh, I think Ricardo can get it done. I think he has some surprises his sleeve for uh, Chad. Now Chad's awesome. Chad's been on a tear ever since the first time he lost to. Uh, Jose Aldo. I mean, Jonas, I'm going to ask you to like, go. Got, like, completely embarrassed in the beginning of 2012 and just starts laying waste to everybody that gets in the cage until he faces Aldo again. I mean, you can't count this guy out, but I, I've been really impressed and I've been really looking forward to see uh, Ricardo Lamas rise. And this is, this is the best opportunity he's got to rise to the occasion. I think he's going to take full advantage of it. Whew. Pagman, what do you got? Yeah, I gotta agree with Nick on this one. I'm not even having much trouble picking this one, to be honest. I got to <laughs> Chad Mendez. Um, Mendez, I think he's just aside from submissions, I think he's a little bit better everywhere. I think he's he's a freak of nature athletically. Again, I mean, this guy is probably the most athletic, one of the most athletic guys in the UFC. He comes forward. He doesn't have a problem coming forward. I don't think Lamas is gonna be. If Lamas gets too aggressive, I can see him getting caught because Chad has really tightened up his striking skills a lot. Mm -hmm. As we saw in the last Aldo fight, he stood in the pocket and traded with Aldo. And I mean, and he landed he has, some great shots, yeah. He has a chin on him. He's probably one of the hardest hitting guys in the featherweight division. And he's technical now in his striking, so he's able to find finishes, which attributed to his last few fights, winning those fights by uh, knockout. And, um, when you got hard punches and a hard chin, man, that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, and he's and he's throwing these he's throwing the punches at the right time, throwing the right punches, countering. So I mean, Lamas is gonna have to have some really good counter striking if he wants to keep up with Mendez, because the guy's fast, he's explosive, and I think he can find the takedown. The only problem could be is if he gets caught with a submission, but I don't think I see that happening. Mendez is just too good. I think he's gonna go in there, win a probably win a decision. I would say, yeah, I think you most likely will win the decision. Wow. I think this is one of those cards where we've actually been uh, very, what's the word, um, you know, very, very uh, mixed on our picks throughout the rest, throughout the whole card, which I like. Yeah, it's, that goes to show you how real, how close a lot of these fights are and uh, how good they are, which is, you know, speaks a lot to this card. Which is why I submitted. I tapped out. It's better than 186. Unfortunately, doesn't mean I won't watch it. But you know. <laughs> yeah, we've had some agreements on this one, but there are a lot of close fights on here. Yeah, this is gonna be. This is certainly a fight card where if you had to get in front of the TV this Saturday, this is the card to do it for. Um, I believe that you know. I think more than anything, what we'll see is like maybe a bunch of performance of the nights, uh, because you know they generally do that. Um, 
if there's too if there's too many finishes on the board, but uh, I, I believe it's it's also open for that. There's a lot of great fights and possible finishes to be had on this card, and I can't wait. This is gonna be an awesome card. With that being said, I think we've gone over everything that we can go through here. Um, yeah. Double check the news. I want to say uh, again, thank you to Ulysses uh, Gomez for coming on. That was a, a very fun uh, uh, question of the show that we had. Yeah, he's. It's great, you know. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait. No, we're done. Wait, no, no, no. Wait. Hold on. We're done. Wait. Calm down. We're done. It's over. No, I, I just got. I just got an. I, hold on. I got a thing here. Hold on. I just. Re, I'm reading a, an article that says three fights set for UFC Fight Night events. I want to read them real quick. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh. Okay. Yeah, that's not important. That's not important. Uh, let's see. Come on, give me names. Uh. No, it's, it's night time. It's night time? They don't announce stuff at night? What? No, it's sleep time. <laughs> Nobody cares about your curfew, sir. I don't give a shit. I don't have a curfew, it's just I'm tired. Well, <laughs> stop being a baby, hold on. Alright, so Sean Strickland versus Igor Arahu. Dude, I don't care about that fight. Okay, well, nobody cares about you, so calm the fuck down. That's not nice. I don't. Neither are you. <laughs> Calm your shit. Do you me, really want to talk about that, that fight? I'm not. No. I'm not saying that I am. I'm reading them out for anybody that wants to know. They probably don't know yet. So Igor Rahu versus Sean Strickland for UFC Fight Night 72, which goes down to San Diego on July 15th. Uh, let me see. There's two more, but I'm just reading through the words here. See, even you don't care. You don't care enough to even say that. I'm try. I'm because I'm reading the whole thing. I swear, I just want to hit you with like a wiffle ball bat right now. Just... <laughs> wiffle ball bat of all things. I don't. Well, see. yeah, because I can't hurt you if I do that. They <laughs> don't leave room. I know, huh? Damian Stasiak, Polish featherweight, will fight Yalcin Meza at UFC Fight Night 64. Being that Yalcin uh, lost a matchup there. Um, what is it? And there's one other one. I'm missing it. Where is it? I'm trying to look for it. Nicholas Dalby takes on welterweight prospect Alizio uh, Zelensky. So with, that, with those three fights, I know you don't, and I don't care that you don't know. I'm letting people know. Also, another one, Nicholas Backstrom versus Noad Lahat. Uh, shut up, dude. Fucking people do care. Nobody has to care. To Just because you don't care doesn't mean other people don't care. I actually care. I want to go to sleep. Then go to sleep. We can close this out without you. I don't give a shit. It's go night night. It, uh, you're not being nice either. <laughs> what the fuck? Jonas, put his ass to bed. Fuck, you silly ass bitch. You, yeah, I feel like I need to give you a goddamn water bottle to go to bed with. Calm down. That made no sense. All right, no hot no, <laughs> Nicholas Backstrom versus no. Uh, I meant uh, what is it? Bottle milk. Like you're pissing me off, dude. <laughs> oh, that was too much fun. Nicholas Backstrom versus Noad Lahat in the works for UFC Fight Night in Berlin, which will be headlined by Gustafson versus Teixeira. We actually didn't talk about that one. Alexander, oh, God, go to bed then, dude. I'll talk with it about Jonas. If you want to go to bed, you baby, go. I've been on here for two hours. Go. If you don't want to, go go to bed. I just... Gustafson wins. Huh? Gustafson wins. Gustafson wins. Okay, well, I like this fight. I personally... Huh? Yeah, no kidding. Gustafson wins that one. Well, you, Jonas, you know me. I've never been too high on Glover Teixeira. Um, I didn't think that he had a chance in hell when he fought uh, Jones. I thought that he was a little too overrated. Um, I don't doubt that he's a great yeah. fighter, but um, I, I just didn't think he was championship caliber. I still don't. Um. I think he probably stays in the top ten, being as badly ranked as that division is right now. Um, it's certainly not. A sh it's certainly shallow right now, past number ten, I think. So. Um, drop him below Shogun. What happened? <laughs> yeah, they'll just they'll go ahead and drop him right below Shogun. Probably uh, that would be horrible too. That, but you know, these are media-generated rankings. They, the UFC said that they're gonna have their own people working on it once the Reebok deal hits, which makes a lot of sense, and I actually like that because then I know, don't even know if I like that because then they could just decide who the hell they want wherever. Good point. I mean, uh, I guess we really can't speak on it until we see what they, what their thoughts are. Um, 
but you know, I mean, it'd be cool if like there was a like not if the UFC had this, but if there was like a way to where you can get fans to vote on on rankings, like who should go where. But then again, you get a yeah, lot of that idiots. Also comes down yeah, to, that, that also becomes biased. Yeah, that, you get you get down a lot of idiots that would put something down. I I'm not saying it should be like it should be how the UFC runs things or any promotion. I would just want to see what the public in general thinks. You know what I mean? Um, like say like who would they have? Uh, like you know, don't let I you know I would think Ireland, all of Ireland would probably vote Conor McGregor like at number one, but you know that'd be silly. Um, I personally think Gustafson is too much on the feet for Teixeira. I think he puts him away pretty quickly, like at least by the third fight. I think he's got faster hands, he's got the longer reach, he's got better kickboxing because you know he actually utilizes his kicks. Glover barely utilizes them at all to set up any combinations even. Um, on the ground should be interesting. I think Gustafson will be readily available to uh, fight off any submissions that Glover can throw at him because uh, certainly Glover's dangerous there on the, on the ground. He's shown that in the past. So with that being said, um, I believe Gustafson will probably get the win. Uh, Chris, I don't care to ask you, so we're just not going to ask you. Um, I already gave my opinion. All right, okay, then. Good for you. <laughs> this fight will be going down um, at, uh, what is it? This UFC Fight Night 69 will be it will going down at the O2 World in, Arena in Berlin. Um, that's a great fight, I, so I can't wait to see that one. With that, we'll close it out because Chris Pac-Man's being a big baby. Um, we haven't done this. This is a long one, this was, so. Uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and sign off. Please go ahead and uh, check out our um, archive on iTunes, on Stitcher. Please, uh, you know, go ahead and rate us. Give us a, a, a rating, a comment, a review. We appreciate all uh, um, comments, especially because we'd like to know what it is you'd like us. You'd like to hear more from us. So if you got any thoughts, we'd love to hear it. Again, we want to thank Ulysses Useless Gomez for coming on. One of the more entertaining guests we've had on. I think the most entertaining thus far on our 30th episode of the MMA Discussion Podcast. Jonas, thanks for coming on again, especially to you. You want to get a hold of Jonas? Too bad you can't. You can tell me, and I'll relay it to him. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, if you want to get a hold of me on Twitter at Nick the Phantom on Twitter, you can hit Chris Pagman um, at uh, Chris Pauluka on Twitter. C H R I S P A G L I U C A. If you don't know how to spell that, because nobody should know how to spell that, it doesn't sound right. Um, that you being don't said, sound right. what? You don't sound right. I don't sound. <laughs> 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 He's such a weirdo. I'm just gonna keep saying stupid shit. I know you are. He's you, apparently, you being sleep deprived makes you stupid. No, it uh, makes you cranky. Cranky fucking New Yorker. All right. Anyway, <laughs> that being said, we appreciate you guys listening on our 30th episode. I'm surprised uh, we Thank made it you. this far. This is a, a very fun episode I've had. And i uh, got to say uh, cheers to another 30 more. I appreciate it. We're having yeah. more guests coming on uh, sometime soon. A lot more. Next Wednesday, we are going to have Ryan Couture, yes, the son of the natural Randy Couture, coming on next Wednesday. I am excited as hell for that one. Uh, he's coming recently off his uh, Bellator win last Friday against uh, Dakota Cochran, who unfortunately got released by the Bellator promotion yesterday morning. Um, uh, but uh, it will be exciting to have uh, such a prominent guest on our show. We are also looking to get more guests coming on uh, in the near future. With that being said, let's sound off, guys. We appreciate you. Have a good one, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Also, be be sure to listen to and see uh, from us any news that we put out about the Rampage Jackson Court issue. Yeah, guys. Thanks again for listening, and don't take much of what I say too seriously. Oh, definitely. He's not even serious ever, so just don't take anything he says ever seriously. Jonas, say goodbye. See you guys. Later.